<laughs> Welcome back to the vlog. Back to normality, but I can't believe it. A blue sky to start with. Please like and subscribe. Enjoy the rest of the video. Emma, this is bigger than mine. <laughs> Hello, are you there? You can look round. Crack a jack. Psh, psh. Oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> Never work with owls. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the vlogs. Welcome back to a normal vlog, I guess. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since Jack and I got back from the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, you know what it's like when you're busy have a holiday you're back for a week people say how was your holiday and you think what holiday and that's kind of how it is back on the ground feet whirring stuff to do so what can i tell you let's catch up what can i tell you icarus fulcry center um the wildlife center that's obviously ticking over that's only open to the public through the summer spring and summer um roxy the fox is being really well taken care of especially by annie and jackie i say they're her two main sort of I don't know, carers if you like. Um, but I think she misses the stimulation of people coming around at the weekend, something different for her. Intelligent animals, so the girls are always giving her new things to play with and interacting with her. Um, the pole cats, wow, they've grown. I think the female is as big as a hob ferret, an ordinary hob ferret already, and the boy, he's really big. We've both got stinking colds, and we blame Lily the baby for giving us that cold. She had a bit of a cold, spread to Kyle, he spread it to me. What else can I tell you? Well, it's that time of year now at the Fulcry Centre where we're getting the damp and the cold. So every year, if we've moved birds around, there's always something new to do. So Pedro the Burring Owl, he's so ancient now. I've had to put an extra perch in for him to help him get up to his box. And above his box, he has a heat lamp at this time of the year. Uh, and the Harris's Hawks, which are now free lofted in their own lofts. Uh, today, I've brought some heavy duty clear reinforced polythene, some battens, and the half of their roofs that aren't roofed, we're gonna roof. I was thinking about taking away their their window ledge perches so they couldn't sit in the rain. Uh, but that, I don't know, I don't know. Would they have been happy sitting at the back with those guys? They do like to sit at the front. Bite the bullet, I'm gonna roof it. It is cheaply because things are tough in the UK at the moment but we're gonna roof that off, keep them nice and dry. The cold isn't an issue for our birds. For most of our birds, it is the wet and the cold. The kites, I have removed their window ledge perch so they can't sit at the front half of their aviary where they're gonna get wet. And um, what else can I tell you? The snakes are doing really well. Um, the mangrove snake, have a look at her. She's really growing, she's a beauty. Lots of the snakes are now well into their brumation, their hibernation the marketplace goodness gracious me so it's winter 2022 here in the uk if you're watching from anywhere else and we are in a real financial crisis now and a lot of it isn't the fact people don't have any money it's the fear of how bad it's going to be over the winter so to fill my van up it's 130 pounds right now and that's at least one one tank full a week the price of shopping for your food has skyrocketed. Everyone will tell you the same. Christmas is coming, always an expensive time of year, one way or the other. Um, for me personally, 
shocking. So schools are kind of corporate. That's where I earn my money. That's my business, my school education, animal business. Even the schools are sort of worrying about the cost of heating schools and their budgets and things. So at this time of year, from late November until Christmas, I'm usually ram-packed with school visits, mostly not educational, mostly Christmas run-up, some sort of educational fun for those school kids that have done well so far this year uh, as a group, not the individuals. Um, this is this is the worst December in the diary I've had since I started. This business has been running for 13 years. Hardly any work booked in. So I normally have at least a couple of good weeks before Christmas and then a long Christmas layoff. So this is tough. Breeding my snakes, you know, you guys, if you watch this, you know that I keep and breed quite a few unusual snakes and, and some common or easier to breed ones. It's fascinating to breed them. And to be honest, selling off some of the more specialist youngsters actually pays for my hobby and my interest. And sometimes other things as well. This year, the panic of electricity has meant almost no one is buying reptiles. Uh, stuff I could have sold 50 of last year if I'd have bred them. Not even one this year at a massively reduced price. So it really is. In the UK at the moment, things are tough and they're set to get a lot worse. And goodness me, getting out flying our birds for falconry is the one thing to boost your mental health and take your worries away. Just like if you're a fisherman and so on and so forth. Getting out in amongst nature, wildlife photographer, maybe even a golfer, but it's getting out away from your problems. So I have been out with the boys. Uh, Zeus and I have just started getting back out. It took a bit of time to get him back, back on form after our holiday. Um, if you want to see the Fulkery, watch the Fulkery journals on the channel. Um, it is a form of hunting, of course, even though it's the most ethically sourced food and a very ethical form of hunting, very, very as natural as it can be. Once the birds left your glove, it's just nature, really. But if, you, if that's your bag and you like to see some countryside and so on, watch the Fulkery journals. If it's not, obviously don't. Uh, please support the channel, whether you like Fulkery snakes or wildlife. Um, when you watch this, we'll be so close to a thousand subscribers. That was my that was my goal for Christmas this year. Please be part of that. Click on subscribe if you can. Uh, enjoy the rest of the vlog. I don't know what I'm going to get up to, but I'll try to show you a bit if I get these AV roofs done uh, before this vlog goes out. Um, Hopefully you've seen already while I've been waffling some of the clips of stuff and I'll find you some more stuff and update you all on where we are now since coming back from Mexico. So enjoy, subscribe, catch up with you in a minute. Can she grab stuff yet? No, but she started to pushes, it, it, yeah. Be nice. I bet she's stronger than you think when she grips yeah. on it, isn't it? That's Quite cold, though. It's funny this night, because it definitely prefers the cold end, you know? Fine. <laughs> Look at the little face. Yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. So you might think with all this financial uncertainty in the UK, it's all kind of doom and gloom, but of course it isn't. We're lucky people and we know we're lucky. We get to work with these amazing animals day in, day out. And we get to work in the beautiful Icarus Falkery at Holdenby House, which is just the most wonderful setting. And it really is with your surrounding gardens and estate. And we get to see people happy and enjoying this very special place that yes we do take for granted of course we do we humans we're here the girls are here every day flying birds for our guests but you have to remember when you speak to these guests and you see their faces most people don't get to interact with birds of prey and animals in such a close way and it is just wonderful to behold so for sure if you are in the UK and you really haven't sorted out a good Christmas present for a loved one, icarusfulkery.co.uk. Click on there and see the experiences we have to offer because that is what life is about for sure. 
Now on another note, I'm going to swap you around. Hold on a second. So I was quite local at a, at a job, if you like, the other day with some sort of dis, I don't know, like disadvantaged children, maybe, maybe slight disability, but an outdoor place where they're given the opportunity to grow plants, have fun, and do stuff outside. And my goodness me, if you keep your kids on iPads and Xboxes and you don't take them outside, woe betide you. Get them outside. It is the best place to be amongst nature, not on a screen. And anyway, one thing they do there, they build stuff to help them think about conservation and about doing stuff. So look at this. They've given me, they've been sitting around because nobody wanted them. They couldn't give them away. They've given us two fantastically well-made barn owl nest boxes. They have weathered a bit. I'm going to put a little bit of damp proof membrane. There's a little bit of a lip over here. And then Steve, the gamekeeper, he's going to put them up on the estate so we can monitor them. And hopefully, whether they get kestrels, jackdaws, or the barn owls that live on the estate use these boxes, we can report back and tell the guys what's been going on with their hard work. Best of all, they're now going to make loads of bat boxes and give me loads of them. I just can't believe it. These people are so kind and they're doing such good work with these children. So it's a pleasure to go there and fly the birds and talk to them about birds of prey. And they've given us some amazing barn owl nest boxes. So absolutely brilliant. You can do this yourself, can't you? It doesn't take much to get your kids outside. Um, if you've got a garden, a little bit of research. What can you do to help the hedgehogs and so on? What can you do to help invertebrates in your garden or amphibians? It's all pretty much free stuff. And what a wonderful way to spend your time learning with your kids about wildlife and doing something to help conservation at home. Here and here are my cacti. We've had some recent storms and this guy fell over. Oh, look at that. That's not very snug, is it? And I'm really trying to see if I can weather them outside this Christmas, but it will depend on the wetness and the frost. We'll see how they go. But everything's looking great at the Fulcrum Centre. The girls did the most amazing job, as you can imagine, while Jackie and I were away. The place was tickety-boo. Everybody's good. And they in used their initiative where they needed to. But it is autumn. I think I can't mow anymore, but I might try if we get a dry spell, just to take it down so it's less dewy. Anyway, back to feeding the birds today. So we're going to take Zeus into the weighing room. Uh, we weigh our birds almost every day. And for those of you that aren't falconers, that gives us a chance to have an insight into their mental and physical condition. Because a bird that's fluffed up to keep warm or very relaxed looks fat. A bird that's nervous uh, can pull its feathers in and look very sleek and skinny. But neither of those things may be true. That's just how it looks on the outside due to its feather patination. This guy here, there's two ways I can find out his physical condition. One is to run my hand over his chest bone and his under wing muscles and feel, hold on, and feel what sort of condition is in. Are those muscles big and firm? Are they floppy and flaccid because he needs more exercise? Has he got plenty of meat on his chest? Or can I feel his keel bone sticking through? All, all stuff we can feel physically. Um, I can't show you because I'm holding the phone in the other hand. But I'll pop him on the scales. I'll talk you through that next. Okay, so we're in the weighing room here at the Fulcrum Centre. The scales are set to eight and a half pounds. That's what I think he should balance out at. That's his optimum flying weight. So, if again, if you're not a falconer, these birds have various ways. They could get so thin they're starving and could simply not not be able to fly and, and hunt. Uh, that's the, in the wild. That's the end of them unless they're lucky and find something to scavenge pretty quick. They can have a weight, an eagle like this can put on two pounds of fat, extra body mass, uh, and it could probably live off that for over a month without eating. That's its design. The Falcons, high-speed fighter jets, they only put on a little tiny bit of weight. They don't fatten up like an eagle or a buzzard or a vulture can. So if he's got plenty of fat on him, his tummy is getting really impatient. His tummy is telling his brain, we don't need to go hunting today. Chill out. Unless something trips over in front of us, we don't need to do anything, just relax. 
as that weight comes down and he burns through those calories gradually, his tummy starts to say to his brain, do you know what? We need to get, we're hungry now. Let's go actively hunting. Let's go looking for and pursuing quarry. And it's about there that I want this hunting bird to be. Really muscled up, really strong and fit and well fed, but without excess body fat. So mentally and physically, he is an absolute hunting machine, as nature intended. So he's got all the strength and fitness to pursue game, and he's got that edge on his appetite that says, yeah, I actually want to catch this for my tea. So I'm going to weigh him, see what he weighs. It's a bit tricky one-handed, and he's very fidgety. He's agitated because he knows here, even though he can't see, he's heard me come in here, he knows the routine, he's nine years old, and he knows this is the precursor to him flying and feeding. Weighing him first, checking him out. So he's snatching at the glove and the scales. So as you can see, he's way over that weight. Hold on a second. I just had a comedy error moment there. My small brain got very confused. He wasn't way over the weight. I kept adding weight and thinking, he's ballooned out, what's he been eating? And I realized I got a four pound weight where there should have been a seven pound weight in the mix. <laughs> what a wally. So he's actually eight pounds, six ounces. And that's his absolute bang on hunting weight. Eight pound six to eight pound nine. Is it, is, that's him in the zone, super fit. Very echo in here. I hope you can hear me. I'm just going to give him a little bit of training on the line today and hopefully get out hunting tomorrow. But only time will tell, depending on what ramps up on my workload of maintenance here at the Falconry Centre. So a little insight there of how we manage our birds' fitness regime, really, for the non-falconers. Daily weighing, that gives us an insight into their physical condition and that tells us what their mental condition will be like. And judicious exercise and a very healthy, balanced, varied diet to keep the birds, just like any athlete, tip-top, ready to hunt. Peace and quiet. Look at this, is it nature or is it nurture? So I was fascinated by the moving and the colours of the snakes last time. And now little baby Lily is fascinated by different fish. She's fascinated by her own fish tank, but there's different colour fish in this one. Look at that. Anyway, another year and she'll be able to go bug hunting. Then there'll be more of her on the vlog, I'm sure. Look at that. Beautiful She's girl. not scared of snakes, that's one thing. Look, there's a blue shrimp. Look at it go, look at me shrimp, I haven't seen it for ages. A blue shrimp. <laughs> You're not filming the bloody shrimp. <laughs> you a little shrimp. You a little shrimp. Fascinating, isn't she?